Welcome to the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. The Invisible Wheelchair Podcast was selected by Feedspot as one of the top 10 obsessive compulsive disorder podcasts. I'm Donald Grodoff, EFT tapping practitioner and OCD coach at FamilyOCD.com. On the Invisible Wheelchair Podcast, I focus on the hidden world of OCD and anxiety with interviews and information around this topic. My purpose is to bring about awareness of OCD, those who treat OCD, and of course, those who suffer with OCD. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder is a treatable and manageable disorder. In my practice at FamilyOCD.com, I guide people through the process of ERP therapy and other alternative treatments. If you know of someone suffering with OCD, simply visit FamilyOCD.com. If you or someone you know suffers or has suffered and recovered from OCD and would like to get their story out, simply contact us through www.invisiblewheelchair.com. We want to talk to you and get your story out on the podcast. Know that the ideas and thoughts presented here are not necessarily those of Family OCD, Invisible Wheelchair Podcast, or Donald Grodoff. We also ask you to take just a few moments and leave comments at www.invisiblewheelchair.com. Those comments help us to know what the next topic should be, and we really want to hear from you. Now, let's get to that podcast. This podcast was recorded April 9th, 2021. This is podcast number 55, Postpartum OCD. Today's podcast, we're going to be taking a lot of information from an article called Beyond the Blues, Postpartum OCD. It's by Dr. Jonathan Abramowitz. Uh, Dr. Abramowitz is a professor of psychology and the director of the Anxiety and Stress Disorders Clinic at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And you can also find Dr. Abramowitz on an interview in my archive section of the Invisible Wheelchair podcast. So today is a special day for me because today I'm introducing my co-contributor to the Invisible Wheelchair podcast. And she's also my partner in my practice, Focused Healthy Family. And of course, she's my favorite person in the whole wide world. It is my wife. Welcome, <laughs> Gina. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> uh, Gina and I are going to be working together, too, on another segment of the Invisible Wheelchair podcast called Focused Healthy Family, where we're going to really focus on the family uh, issues around anxiety, around OCD, around different uh, anxiety disorders. So uh, this will you'll be hearing more from, from her side of it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it myself. So uh, today we're, we're talking about postpartum OCD. And the reason uh, this month that this is going to be coming out uh, will be the same month that we're going to have um, a therapist, Jenna Overbau, who is a OCD specialist therapist, um, but also has gone through this herself in the midst of being a therapist. And so I've, gonna, I've got her on the stories from the OCD side telling her story. And then you're going to see her interview this month uh, where she talks about what she does in her practice. So, so Gina, I guess we, we start with, I guess, talking a little bit about what OCD is and what postpartum OCD is. Um, right, right. I feel like it's always important to reiterate what OCD is if you're listening to this podcast for the first time. Um, there's so many misconceptions about what obsessive compulsive disorder is that it's important to differentiate um, that we all can have um, obsessive thoughts in our mind that we can't get rid of. We walk out the door and did I shut the stove off? Did I, I can't remember if I did. We might walk back in the house and check and then get on with our day. Or we might go, you know, I'm pretty sure I did and get on with our day. Someone who has obsessive compulsive disorder and their obsession is over checking and worrying about harm, they would stop and go back 
And they might do that 10 or 15 times and check and their day would be consumed by this. The, the other thing is not only do they have the obsessive thought, but then the compulsion, there's a compulsion that leads them, you know, sometimes it's avoidance or engaging in a behavior. So, you know, it might take them an hour to get out of the house every morning because of a checking ritual. Um, and that's just one example. Well, and that, that, that compulsion is, uh, is, is their belief that by doing this repetitive behavior or whatever it is, it'll bring, it'll, you know, lower that, that fear, that thought, get that thought right. And it does initially, but then, then it, it comes right. It comes back. It, in fact, sometimes harder. Well, yeah, because then it's the brain is kind of cycling around saying, okay, I have this fear, so I have to check. And so it kind of reinforces that idea that every time I have this thought, I have to check. And if you just continuously loop in the, the thought and in the compulsion, you know, it can consume an entire day as, as we've experienced <laughs> with our two kids who have OCD. Um, it's an, it, it can be exhausting for the person suffering from OCD as well as people caring for that person. And so moving into then, you know, and there, there's quite a, uh, a variety of different styles, I guess you'd say, of OCD, uh, from harm to um, sensory, motory uh, OCD. And we're, Contamination fears, and yeah, there are different types of OCD, basically. And so today, we're, we're in this, we're talking about postpartum OCD, which is comes after, usually... Uh, it comes after a woman has given birth. Right, it can be around the time of birth during pregnancy, but usually shortly after. Um, we've all heard of postpartum depression. Um, that's, you know, I guess that's been portrayed in movies and TV shows and things. Um, it, difficult events, even exciting events like a birth of the baby, you know, are traumatic in, in some aspects and it can trigger all different kinds of things. Um, things like postpartum depression, as well as um, postpartum OCD. And, and then there's the things that we see in the news media of postpartum psychosis, which we wanna to differentiate today that that's not the same as postpartum OCD. You know, you've heard stories in the news of a mother drowning her, her newborn baby. And, um, you know, that's, that's a psychosis. That's, you know, your delusion and hallucinations are merged in with reality in your mind and you can't tell the difference. And that's a very different thing. Um, and we're going to talk more about what postpartum OCD is. Well, and I, I, I believe it, it sounds to me like, and I don't know if this, if you know this, but like, it's really more involved with the first child. Because one of the things they talk about you know, trying to figure out the causes of it, they talk about it's that that uh, it could could be the the idea of rapid change and responsibility, and a lot of times that comes in on pretty heavy with the first child. But it, you know, it can happen at any time. You know, people yeah. who have postpartum depression, I know, you know, it doesn't always have to be the first baby because introducing a new child is <laughs> it's quite an experience each and every time. Um, you know, and it's, there's changes going on in your body and hormones and things that can trigger, you know, I believe a lot of these things are genetic tendencies. Um, I, I suffer from depression myself and, you know, I, it can be triggered by different life events, just like OCD can. Um, and so I, yeah, I would think that it would, could happen with any pregnancy. Well, and, and if you think about uh, the, the, the third child, like that, that's a pretty big change itself because you're going from one parent equal to each, you know, one parent to one child versus now you got a third one that changes the dynamic and it's a whole new kind of a whole new ball game in a way. Yeah, lots of parents yeah, have told me that uh, going from two to three is much harder than three to four. Yeah. Um, we didn't go down that path, so uh, we can't speak on that. But uh. <laughs> that's right. Um, but yeah. So and and the other thing about it is that you may think about this because it has uh, it's around birth that it only affects women, but in reality, they really have found that it affects fathers too. Um, I, I don't know that I could say that I went through that, but I do know that I had some really, you know, some. Um, strange thoughts, not good thoughts. I, you know, I, I remember. To back up a minute, Don, um, 
so we all have worries and fears, um, you know, when our kids are born, right? You know, am I going to do something wrong? Am I going to hurt the child? Are they going to die in their sleep? You know, the fear of SIDS. Um, a lot of us may have these fears and experiences, and that's normal. But for it to be postpartum OCD, you know, those fears would be so intense and so strong that you had compulsions to continuously check on the baby over and over again, and or sometimes being afraid to take care of the baby because they're so fearful that they could hurt the baby that they don't even want to take care of the baby. Um, those fears are so intense. Um, and so, well, I mean, just, I, that... just like general OCD, we all have thoughts and fears and worries, but when they're taken to this extreme level and we have the, the compulsions, um, you know, that's when it's the disorder. Well, they, they, the, the, some of the symptoms and compulsions I read about is like even a, a avoiding feeding them because of fear of poisoning them, you know, um, avoiding TV or news articles about uh, abuse for uh, with children, you know, and then they they also talked about um, mentally going over the whole day to make sure that there was no point that you possibly could have harmed them or done something uh, irresponsible to them. Um, so it goes it really pretty deep beyond even just the idea of harm, but just the the looking at articles about it uh, that can yeah it taking consuming a large quantity of your time but to yeah. speak to the general fears um, that parents have I think you were going to tell the story of when our oldest child um, was a baby I guess um, you used to have yeah I mean pain. you know as a father you, you, all of a sudden that, that responsibility is becomes financial it becomes uh, you're you're supposedly or now is the 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 head of the family or whatever, you know, and so in your mind anyway. Um, and so it, they had this, these fears of, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to keep up that responsibility? But yeah, I, I'd have, I had these really bad dreams and they were re reoccurring as far as I'd have them frequently throughout the, the time. And one of them especially sticks out in my mind is uh, our child the, the baby was up on top of this sand dune kind of thing and there was a bulldozer heading towards him on the top of the sand dune and I was at the bottom and I'm screaming for not that that would have done any good because this was I literally he was a baby just laying up there but I was trying to climb up and every climb every step I would take I'd slide back a little bit and I, I could just couldn't get the grip and couldn't get up there and it I'd, I'd wake up in kind of a cold sweat and like almost like panting, like, oh my God, that, you know, is he, and I'd almost, I, I'd have this desire to go check, make sure, he, you know. Uh, yeah, I, remember, I remember when, you know, this is, he's 23 years old now, but I remember, you know, you telling me having these dreams, you know, that they happened a number of times. And when you have dreams like that, it's very scary. And you wake up and um, it feels very real, right? When yeah, we have to, yeah. Like, and that, I think that's, part of what OCD these these thoughts feel very real you know yeah, and, and you know the fear yeah feels real and then it's you know something terrible could happen to my baby so I have to make sure you know that that they're safe and and um engaging in the compulsions to prevent them I'll, um in this article Dr. Abramowitz talks a lot about some of the examples of the postpartum obsessions that can happen and a lot of them relate to, you know, your fear of that you could harm the baby, that I might drop the baby from a high place, um, that I could put the baby in the microwave oven or accidentally stab him. So some of these fears are irrational. Some of them are rational, but taken to an irrational level. Um, and person with obsessive compulsive disorder is so afraid of doing these things that they have compulsive be behaviors to prevent themselves from doing that or avoiding. And that's where the big difference is between postpartum psychosis and postpartum OCD is, you know, when you're psychotic, you don't know what reality is. Someone with obsessive compulsive disorder, they know their fears are irrational or they don't make sense. And even they understand that the compulsions don't but they cannot stop themselves from engaging in them. Um, they're so stuck in it, but they realize that it doesn't make any sense. A lot of times, at least in children, it can really poorly affect their self-esteem because they think they're stupid. Why am I doing this? This is really dumb. 
but yet my brain, you know, has got caught in this loop of uh, just worrying over and over. Our youngest has been flaring up with OCD lately and it's she just repeating the same things over again. I'm so afraid I'm dirty. I'm so afraid I got that on me. And then if I got that on me, I, everything else is dirty. And she'll describe what's going through her mind. She's 12 and it's like, wow, you know, to be in stuck in that loop of fears, um, how intense it is. And so back to the difference, you know, between the psychosis and OCD with OCD, we're aware, you know, people with OCD are very rarely. And Dr. Um, Abramowitz says, you know, you can't never say with hundred percent certainty, but he says like, you know, 99% of the time, they're not actually going to hurt their child. If it's postpartum OCD, they're so worried about hurting them. You know, they're more likely to, you know, not want to care for them, have somebody else care for the baby because they're, they're so afraid of doing that behavior. But again, it's not a, it's not a rational fear or the fear is taken to an irrational level um, versus psychosis. Uh, the, the, they're totally out of reality. And so that's, those are the times when you hear about someone hurting their child is usually it involves um, psychosis. Well, and um, talks about there in the article too, that um, they, they avoid doing something. And then in their mind, they, they, they say, oh, I, I avoided a catastrophe. And so they, they think they did good in doing it, which just really builds the compulsion. And then that, that just builds on itself and, and gets worse and worse. I, I know um, uh, the therapist, uh, Jenna, that, that I interviewed, she, she, wouldn't, she couldn't put socks on her baby because she was afraid she was gonna break the legs of the baby. You know? So she would, her husband, a lot of times her husband had to dress the baby. And what was, what was interesting, and, and you'd hear it in the, in the interview, uh, she talks about her husband is an OCD therapist too, and he knew better, you know, <laughs> but he still did a lot, you know, and played into her compulsions because he just wanted her, you know, he, he cared about her and wanted to make, make her um, okay or whatever, you know, so it was really interesting to hear that a therapist would have, have problems too, you know, and they know better, but they... <laughs> Interesting that they're both OCD therapists, so they're both very aware of it. Um, but it I shows the power of OCD, how strong it comes on, you know. And, and unfortunately, it's so misunderstood and so underdiagnosed. Um, you know, that's kind of why Don and I advocate in general for OCD and, and making parents aware, because I think they wrongly get diagnosed with other things sometimes. And um, it, it's just overlooked and misunderstood. And so the same thing, you know, for mothers who've just had a baby, you think, oh, this is a wonderful time of the year. You know, I know just the stigma of postpartum depression, you know, just being able to acknowledge this is not your fault. This is nothing, you know, you did. It, it's a condition and your brain is not functioning properly. And so um, with postpartum OCD, it's important to understand that this can happen. It's not, um, he gives the incidence of a, uh, how often it's uh, like one to three percent is what they they show yeah. but but and again those those are um those are incidences they have on record as <laughs> that, yeah people that, was... that have been di diagnosed and so you know there could be plenty of other people people who think they're crazy they think they're psychotic you know but it really you know they don't understand that they might be so fearful they're actually you know they see a news story on tv of a, a mother who did drown her children and they're they're so fearful of doing that that um they convince you know they think they're psychotic when they're not you know um i can only imagine going through this and not understanding ocd not getting the right help you know that's got to be hell for a mother it's hard enough to be a mother of the newborn and just adjusting to that and caring for the baby as well as caring for yourself um and, you know, by sharing this, I hope we can reach um, people. And if you notice, you know, a newborn mother struggling, you know, it's so important to get help and, and, and get diagnosed and go to a qualified professional that can help them the sooner, the better. Well, yeah, and that you, we want to emphasize too, because we know this ourselves is, is finding somebody that understands OCD. Um, well, like the lady I'm, uh, that I interviewed, the therapist I interviewed, where they understand OCD, they understand ERP because you know, um, Dr. Abramowitz talks about the the treatment factors. There are, you know, are some medications, but that that isn't really the the top. What really he talks about is the ERP, the exposure response prevention, which, which is, is part, part of, of 
cognitive behavioral therapy, but it's, yeah. uh, and it's the gold standard for treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, so yeah, the, there's thoughts, you know, most therapists have heard of OCD. I mean, I learned about it in my mental health studies. I'm an occupational therapist and I had a whole um, semester of classes on mental health and illnesses. Um, and yet, and let, you know, as a, a therapist who, you know, works one-on-one -on -one with psychotherapy with people that might deal with a lot of different things, if they don't specialize in OCD treatment, I've heard stories from other parents and kids of OCD. Sometimes it can make it worse. You can't just talk therapy someone out of OCD. You know, it's not going to work. You know, every time our kids have a flare up with their OCD and we try to rationalize with them, it usually makes it worse and not better. Um, and, and so it's really important to get a qualified person. You know, do you, if you can find someone who specializes in OCD, ask them how often, you know, are they familiar with ERP therapy? If, you know, the, it's so important to have someone. And as always, when finding a therapist, if you don't like the person you found, find a different one, you know? Yeah, because I think it's important too that they, they're able to mesh, uh, you know, like when, when we went through it first time, you know, finding that that our therapist, she loved dogs, and yeah, we you got know, lucky. We got lucky. She, yeah, she was the yeah. only therapist in the area who took Medicaid, and she was a woman, which my daughter, her daughter, was more comfortable with. And then she had a love of dogs, and would literally bring her dogs into some session, which was like a miracle cure for our older daughter. You know, dealing with her OCD, so it was a perfect fit. Um, but yeah, I tell you know parents all the time with any kind of therapist, um, you know it we all have different personalities, right. And, and different, um, personalities can uh, make us feel more comfortable or uncomfortable. And so you want a qualified person, but you also want someone that you feel relatively, um, comfortable, you know, comfortable with. with. So yeah, if, if you're not happy with whoever you're working with. And, and you can I'm start, you know, you, they can start that search with at the, um, IOCD, uh, F the international OCD foundation. I think it's IOCDF.org. They actually give you, a, you can find it through there. And they also, what really is good is they, they give you questions uh, yeah. to ask because that's another thing, you know, knowing what to ask, knowing to ask about ERP, knowing to ask about certain things can make a big difference. Uh, yeah, because yeah, a lot of therapists would say, yeah, I worked with OCD before, but um, yeah, having those questions of what to ask of the, the professional, because if, you know, you're, if you're, experiencing this for the first time, a loved one, yourself, any type of OCD. And it's a lot to figure out and understand. I mean, I had the healthcare background, so I had a little bit of knowledge more so than an average person would. But even then I, I was oblivious to really what was going on with our daughter because of this, uh, partly because of the stereotypes out there um, about OCD. Well, and you can also, you know, for the audience, to, just to know, you can find resources within the uh, invisiblewheelchair.com website. I have, like I say, I've interviewed numerous different uh, therapists, doctors, uh, and they're all up there. Uh, and they, they would be a, a good source too, to be able to research and, and find, uh, find somebody to help you in that place. So uh, any, uh, other thoughts, Jeannie, that do you have on this? Uh, I'm looking over the article from uh, Dr. Abramowitz, um, and I'm just looking at his final thoughts at the end of his article. Um, you know, he's he's speaking to people who could be suffering silently with postpartum o OCD, and um, he 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 talks about um, if you're afraid of your thoughts being so fearful of acting on them um, that you're avoiding situations, you're um, you're trying to avoid the thoughts, the chances of your obsessions, um, it, it, there's a good chance that you have postpartum OCD and not psychosis. If you're actively trying to avoid these, these fears that you have, you know, that that's a good sign. Um, and, and, and your uh, risk of actually acting on them is, is really very low, despite the real fear, you know, the person is suffering with. So, um, you know, and I think you'll have a link to this article, Don, in the, in the notes, you know, if you feel like you might be suffering from this or you know someone is, you know, print the article off, have it in digital format to share with the healthcare provider because, you know, doctors might not be aware. You go to your, <clears throat> your OB or something, you need a referral to a psychiatrist or a therapist, you know, they, 
they might write it off as something else if, if they don't have the knowledge. So it's helpful. Um, All right. Well, I hope this has helped my the audience out there to, you know, like I said, if you know somebody, pass this along to them because uh, like I said, we, we know from our fact that when you're, you get lost, you, you know, the, the other part we, we like to talk about, and one of the reasons we're going to be going into the uh, focused healthy family segment of this is that, you know, the one person that suffers from it is not alone. The, the family is part of that too. They, they suffer along with you a lot of times from stress and anxiety that, that also could help to get therapy for, uh, for the, 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 the husband or the spouse, or the, even the children, because it affects all of them. And that, that yeah. anxiety is strong. Yeah, it doesn't matter who's suffering from the OCD, whether it's mom, dad, or a child. Um, yeah, it's going to affect the entire family in different ways. And it, um, it's important to get the help. Well, Gina, it was fun doing this first one together here. And, and I, I can't wait to do some more. And have you do some on your own too. I'm very excited as well for us to do a lot more podcasts together. I, I have a whole lot of ideas from all the <laughs> blogs and things that I've been writing. So this is great. And it's a great first start. Well, you know, since you mentioned, why, why don't you mention the two blogs you do or the, uh, well, whatever, if you want to, I, I, I hadn't thought about that, but you do. Oh, a okay. And we can talk about those in another podcast too, but I, I write on child-led learning uh, my blog is childledlearning.wordpress.com, um, and it, it's all around my beliefs with parenting and, and, and learning with our children. And my other blog, it's called Gina's Life Journey. Um, it's another WordPress blog. Um, it's a collection of everything, <laughs> the journey of my life, from my own issues with depression to dealing with my children, suffering with OCD, parenting, uh, attach, a lot of attachment parenting, and um thoughts in there and family life struggles it's just kind of a collection of all kinds of things so yes yeah. check out my blogs I yeah for the journey we've we've been through together here it's uh, so all right well that that wraps it up for this one and like i said uh, i hope this has helped you all uh and if we can be of any assistant uh please let us know so yeah. take care it's great to be here bye-bye This concludes this podcast. We really would appreciate your comments. Simply leave a comment at www.invisiblewheelchair.com. There, you're able to submit a comment that will help us determine future podcasts. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the podcast, please email don at invisiblewheelchair.com. Remember, there is a corresponding tapping recording for each of the podcasts, with the exception of the interview podcast. You can find these tapping recordings and archive past podcasts at www.invisiblewheelchair.com. Finally, there is relief for OCD, and we at familyocd.com and FocusedHealthyFamily.com can help you find that relief. Again, you can contact us through those sites, FamilyOCD.com or FocusedHealthyFamily.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Invisible Wheel One, that's the number one, or at FamilyOCD. So thank you for listening. Keep tapping and transcending your life to new heights.